Switch it up just a little. Everybody take a different pose. How about the movie? Take a look at the final seven. Great record. We're talking about Jim Hood and 27 coming in. Guys, it's only been finished one time. Take it on. Give up this song. Now, I want to thank South Carolina Athletic Commission. The Honorable Edward Ann Estridge, the Honorable Paul Bates, the Honorable Dr. John Williams, the Honorable Dr. Paul Kimmore, and the Honorable Dr. Garrett Messer. South Carolina. We have 14 professional MMA bouts tonight, culminating in our highly anticipated main event. Okay. We're on the first fight tonight, scheduled for three final rounds in the World Tour Division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome the cage, Joshua Baker.
right, let's get it ready for fight two. Let's get it up to Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, this middleweight MMA bout is scheduled for three five-minute rounds and is brought to you by bookmaker.eu. Let's meet the fighter. First fighter in the corner. He stands by the end of his tall. He ran in one of the eight five rounds. He holds a special record of two wins, one loss, and he fights out of Fort Long Beach, Florida. Introducing Zach. Taking control right away, guys. Yeah, do you think they're excited to fight tonight? <laughs> Man, Bonnie is just a specimen. Look at this guy. He is tall, lean, huge muscle mass. That yeah. is a big middleweight. Yeah, and that's and as you know, Ian, you hydrate up after you cut that weight, and he's a big boy in there. Left to left, right here. Don't wait. Don't wait. Left to left, go to right. did a great job. He literally jumped on the back of Morrison. Looking like he's holding his knee. He gave out a, a yell. He looks in a lot of pain right now. I'm not sure what's going on. I hope he's all right. Well, Oh yeah. Dude, you grab it, I'm gonna move out of your way. I just let him have it. Morrison's yeah. striking was just on Now watch the point. leg, watch the leg. Oh, we can't see it with the camera view, but it looks like he folded on his leg and yeah. broke it. Oh, he broke it, I saw it. And, and, and that whole started, when you got the combination going, oh. Morrison hit a real good uppercut. It kind of started that in motion. The referee did a great job getting in there and stopping that fight. 
happens with less injuries, with less injuries getting taken out of the cage on a stretcher. John O'Malley. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful <laughs> effort. What a beautiful show of courage from Dalen after what looks like to be a pretty serious injury. Yeah, in the crowd here in South Carolina giving their applause uh, because obviously you never want to see anybody injured. Let's get it up to Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, Our third contest of the evening is still three five minute rounds, but now in the light heavyweight division. Interesting first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome to the cage, Simon Marini. Come out of a plane, and soon you won't have that anxiety. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, please welcome to the cage, Carl Williams. Yeah, nothing but respect from these two. I just love how XMMA is just giving all these fighters a second chance, and it's just amazing opportunity for them. With against him, but he said he's mentally different in a different place, and he's ready to put on a show tonight. And Get again, ready for a banger. You're going to see that size difference as we did. Yep. You'll see Williams with that overhand right to start things off. Gentlemen, referee Jimmy Neely calls a stop to this contest at three minutes, 50 seconds of the very first round, declaring your winner by TKO, Carl Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, our fourth bout on the card tonight Scheduled for three five-minute rounds is now in the bantamweight division. Interesting first, making his way to the cage and fighting out of the blue corner. Please welcome Tyler Wilson. All right, here we go. Ian, probably one of our favorite interviews that we had with the fighters yesterday because you see Tyler's lost three in a row. Jason Fagler. I like to say uh, of the fighting Fagler's, Jesse, because his dad started at gym and now handed it out to him and his brother fights as well. This is a baby boy. Yep. 
and he is just super motivated tonight to get the win and to make his family proud. dominate at the end. Listen, Wilson did a great job fighting through this adversity, but Jason Fagler controlled every round in this fight, despite the moments Wilson had. Every time he got some momentum, it would get taken back. Ladies and gentlemen, after three full rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard for the official decision. All three judges scored about 30 to 27. Declaring your winner by unanimous decision, the Nightmare, Jason Fagler! Let's get it up to Big Bo for our next fight. Ladies and gentlemen, our fifth bout on the card this evening is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome to the cage, Cody Jones. Cody Jones, and his nickname is Cold Blooded. If you see someone when they teach the art, they don't necessarily want to learn from someone else. So I'm a big fan of Cody Jones. I was excited when I found out he was on this uh, he was on this card tonight. This X MMA card has been. Nothing but entertainment. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Please welcome to the cage, Jackson Ramos. From background, being from a third world country and then being on like the special police task force, you know, that has to give him some confidence that going in a cage, you know, that's not very scary compared to the line of work that that man does. Absolutely. Now his ability to adjust last fight, August 12th. Hey guys, another fight as we pointed out to start this. Height advantage, reach advantage. Let's see it how it plays out. Jackson Ferrius Ramos, very quick fighter, quick t twitch muscles, able to get in and dart out. He's gonna have to do that as well. Yeah. No, go, you go. Yeah, Ramos is in you know enemy territory going against the hometown favorite, Cody Jones. You know, Cody Jones has the most intense look in his eyes. I'm getting chills. I don't ever want someone to stare at me that way. <laughs> <laughs> you see the chamber on that on that head kick and how high he oh, got it. Dropped it. Oh, fairy has got dropped. Beautiful right team, straight to the face. Oh, and a big overhand right, covered it up a little bit and caught it. Make it on that jab, I love yep. that jab. Look at that. There it is. Dropped him with the Sat jab. Him with the jab. Cody now knowing that he's got the upper hand and raining down punches on the ground and pound. Look at the elbows. <laughs> I'm 
starting to lock up a head arm triangle. Yep. And he got he the did. tag. He tapped it. Head arm uh, triangle. And I don't know if it was. That was cool. <laughs> Tired, he'd been beaten up, and he's and he and he laid it down. Cody there you have it. Cage. Cody <laughs> Jones right in front of us taps out the Brazilian. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jason Collins calls a stop to this contest at four minutes. 20 seconds of round number one. Declaring your winner by TKO, cold-blooded Cody Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, our seventh bout on the card is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome to the cage, James Brown. Get down, James Brown. Fighting out of Wilmington, North Carolina. He's really stepped up his training as of late. the contender series but second guessing himself a little bit questioning himself in the last couple of fights yeah you know Collins a tough guy you know I used to train at Factory X they have an amazing program led by Mark Montoya and Collins a guy who's been in the UFC he's fought some of the top guys in the world he just has to get it together mentally the mental game is such a big part of the fight game and anything that you do combat 12 series Oh wow, yeah, June 17th, that was yeah. so recent. So, so when you do that weight cut, getting those extra couple pounds off is very difficult. Yeah, he's, he's not that big though, you know what I mean? Like, there, there are some big 145ers around. Look at his opponent, it's six foot two and fights at 145. I mean, Collins, five foot nine. He's definitely thicker though, but you gotta remember, after you fight, you're full of cortisone, it's harder to get the weight off. Your body just holds it a little. <laughs> Would probably have an advantage if he did start throwing some low level takedowns. Take round.
Beautiful. I just wish. Oh, oh. he catches to Anglin. James Brown catches him, Good and that's it. it. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jamie Neely calls a stop to this contest at 53 seconds of the second round, declaring your winner by TKO, James Gidam Brown! The card is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. Please welcome to the cage, Teruto Ishihara. Five minute rounds in the bantamweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. Please welcome to the cage, Chris Beal. Hey, he came a long way, fighting out of Ventura, California. That's almost as far as you can. Please welcome to the cage, Josh Reddinghouse. Really? Yeah, you know, we hear that story a lot. We see so many high level fighters, high level athletes 
on the regional scene. Yes. XMMA tonight has been a prime example of that. We've seen some... Always trying to figure out, you know what fight you are, but it seems the clock ticks slowly until that happens. 100%. And you know what? That's one of the things that I really do love about some of these regional shows is that the fighters can come out and test out the cage. They can come and sit in the crowd before their fight and really get a feel of the arena. A lot of the bigger shows, they don't give you the opportunity to do that. No, and I don't. think it's so important to really... Going for the finish, now he's got his head locked up as well. Yeah, and go back to your point you're saying with the feints. I remember Ray Seppo said, you never uppercut. throw three feints. Oh, wow, that's yeah. over. Latinib. Two uppercuts in a row ends this thing as Redding House, the finisher, finishes Chris Field. Beautiful performance from Josh Redding House. I really love it. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jason Collins calls a stop to this contest at two minutes, 10 seconds of the very first round. Declaring your winner by TKO, Josh Reddinghouse. Division, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. Please welcome to the cage, Demarcus Jackson. Demarquez. Demarquez Jackson, Scrap Iron. Listen, I said, how'd you get the nickname Scrap Iron? He said, well, Listen, we, we got, it's moonshine from where I come from, so we call it Scrap Iron. Out of the red corner, making his way to the cage, please welcome Joe Gelati. Capo. Capo is Joe Gelati's El nickname. Capo. Yeah, and this is his first time in his career that he has made 170. And he, and he commented, listen, I've won before getting in the cage. I've never made 170 before. He was very proud of getting down to that, and he was very proud of being on weight. Yeah, he got his nickname Capo from actually being in jail, which yep. I, can, I can relate to. Hey, off. This guy's been out of the cage for six and a half years. Oh my goodness, I, yeah. I don't know that I would want to come back and do this after six and a half years. Like, every camp is the hardest camp ever. And he shoots right away trying to get that shot in. Marquez sprawls but, out of it. But the thing is, he's so young, and now he's training at the MMA lab with guys like Benson Henderson, and he felt like he just needed to grow.
Gelati changes levels again. And he, he got the, he's got his hands together on the double leg. He's also in the guillotine. And the reversal from DeMarquez, and he's he gets the, the guillotine. Wow. What a finish. Wow, what a finish. He locked up that guillotine as he sprawled across the game. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, making his way to the cage, please welcome Julian Lane. Let me bang, bro. That's right. You might know Julian Lane from the Let Me Bang Bro Ultimate Fighter that went viral. This guy is a bare knuckle boxing star.
Oh my god, I can smell them. I can smell the dick cheese.
stand up. Bro, stay in the bank, baby. <laughs> Nah, you won't. What you gonna do? You laying on me, bitch. Pussy hoe. You a hoe. You a hoe, that's why they cut you, bro. You can't give me UFC like this. You can't do this. Nah, you soft. You soft. This fight is brought to you by Black Chip Poker. Let's meet the fighters.
representing Jared Nitrain Gooden. Our referee in charge, Jason Collins. I, it was a world-class knockout, no doubt about it, by Joaquin Buckley. That's you mean Impa? Yes. Yeah, Impa. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's all part of growing. It sucks. He has to be someone's highlight reel, but he's he's ready to come back. He's ready to not be known as that guy. And I mean, look how physically fit both of these guys are. This is going to be a banger right here. They both are musicians. Fun fact: they both, both play yeah. two inner instruments. That's. Jared trying that jab to the body. Kasong and I stalking. Oh, gets him with nice the left, left hand. Oh, oh if hit on him with the left. Oh! Right hand. Wow, he's rocked. He's wobbly on his feet. Oh, oh. and another big right hand. Kasong and I Step is in. finishing him. This one is over. Oh. Shame on! 
160 pounds. He holds a professional record of 11 wins, three losses, and he fights out of Little Haiti, Miami, Florida. Introducing Luis Violent Bob Ross Pena. And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet ten inches tall. He weighed in at 160 pounds. He holds a professional record of 23 wins, five losses, one draw. And he fights out of Alpharetta, Georgia. Introducing Ill Will Brooks. Our referee in charge, Jimmy Neely. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the back. I want a good, clean fight. I want you to protect yourselves at all times, obey my commands at all times. If you want to touch gloves, do so now. Back to your corners, ready to fight. All right, a little respect there. And again, the theme of the night interwoven as we see a difference in height, a difference in the fighters and the stature. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And I'm going to talk about that more in a second. But can I give a quick shout out to Big Mo for. Ready, ready, let's go.
What's going on, everybody? This is the Glove Touch. I'm here with uh, Short Mo. Uh, we just finished. We just finished up XMMA five. What's your initial thoughts after the card? Well, as usual, the XMMA card delivered. I mean, the matchmaking for XMMA five has been phenomenal since I came on. And every show, I'm like, oh, I'm not sure if they're going to do any better. But they did a great job tonight. I mean, 14 fights. All of them, I think, were fantastic matchups all the way down to the main event. So. I mean, I'm just impressed again. Had a great time working a great crowd in South Carolina. You know, some of these states down here in the South are sometimes deprived of a great MMA show, so I'm glad that XMA, you know, found a place to come down and really entertain the local community. You've had an interesting past year. You've, uh, you're now the official or the main ring announcer for XMMA and BYB. You're doing commercials. You're on movie sets. How did this career in ring announcing and your voice come uh, how, how did it start? I mean, you know, I, I, I knew I wanted to work in entertainment after playing college football, and I had buddies that said I should try commentary because that's a, you know, a usual career path for athletes when they're done, but I was so burnt out of football and basketball, but I loved combat sports, so I came on as a commentator, earned the ring announcing job, and, you know, at that point I was like, all right, well, if I'm going to pursue this, I want to be the best at it. I don't really just want to just be a guy that just happens to ring announce. I want to be the best ring announcer in the world. And so I've just chased it hard. I pushed hard. And, uh, you know, I've been given, or I've, eh, I've earned great opportunities, I think. And uh, I'm very appreciative of XMA for allowing me to, uh, to, to have, that, have that role. So. And in your perspective, what is XMMA doing uniquely um, and different that makes XMMA stand out from other promotions? I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, from the matchmaking to where we have events to, you know, the media team that we have to the way that they present their show. I mean, all of it is unique. And I think that's important when you look at these promotions. You know, so many of them are so cookie cutter and they just kind of get lost in the shuffle. And no one really finds a reason to, to give a damn about them. And I think that XMA is trying to carve their own niche and really trying to find something that, you know, makes them unique. Hmm. So on your Instagram story, you started a red corner, blue corner thing. Yeah. So I uh, jotted down a few red corner, blue questions. Yeah. You ready? Yeah, hit me. All right. The MMA holes or the MMA guru? Oh, come on now. I mean, pass. Can't maybe choose one. Instagram or Twitter? Instagram. The PFL or Bellator? <laughs> Both could be employers of my so I'm be careful how I answer that one. Pass. All right, big mill, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, thank you. Hey, shout out to the Glove Touch. Make sure you follow the Glove Touch. Just me. Thank you, guys. Have a good Can't deny it. XMMA, the matchmakers are insane. These fights have been nothing but barn burners. How many finishes did we have tonight? I think there was two decisions on the whole 16-fight card, was it? I mm. believe. Incredible. Yes, I love this show. What was fight of the night for you? Oh, man. Honestly, the main event itself was very competitive, but... There was a lot of good ones here, so it's, it's hard to, to uh, pick a favorite when every single fight tonight was a, was a very competitive or dominant fight. You know, there was no snooze fest tonight at all, so very hard to pick. What's XMMA doing sort of uniquely and differently that other promo promotions aren't doing that makes XMMA stand out? Well, first of all, they treat the staff and the media like royalty. They're so, so kind to everybody. They've uh, showed us so much hospitality. But on top of that, the matchmaking. Every, they really know what they're doing when they put together these fights. They know, the, they know their stuff. They do their homework. They know the styles that they're clashing together. And you see it card after card, and that's why everybody wants to watch it, and that's why everyone wants to fight for them. But really, uh, something else I admire about them is they kind of have that redemption factor where they're bringing guys back to life. You know, every time you see some of these folks fight here, you get some, get a couple victories in a row, they go off to UFC, PFL, Bellator. So they're a fighter's fight league. Would you willingly get COVID from Joe Biden if it would lower gas prices? You know, I've gotten through COVID twice right now, so uh, why not, you know? But hit me with it. I can do it again. Every time it gets easier, right? Do you think blind people can see in their dreams? See in their dreams? Wow, that's a very, very perplex, perplexing question. I imagine they get probably visuals and colors, maybe? I don't know. I don't know if they could really put things together. But they do feel, so maybe, maybe. Thank you for your time. Thank Maybe's. you, brother. You do such great work. I appreciate the time, and I'll be checking out the channel as always. Stay up, brother. Uh, really great job by everybody. I want to thank the production crew, everybody here in South Carolina that came out for the fights, and, of course, you, the viewers. For Ian Heinish, Jessica Rose Clark, I'm Todd Romero saying so long. Make sure to tune in to XMMA 6. XMMA 5 was off the chain. Thank you for tuning in.